Amen. 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 We got you back. Oh, oh Lord, oh Lord, I come, I come to receive, to receive my blessing. I'm patiently waiting. I'm waiting. Oh, for the harvest. Yes, I got the Hebrew, 11 and 1. Lord, that kind of faith, faith to know that mine, and this is mine, oh, mine, oh, Lord, is harvest, oh, Lord, eh. oh, Lord, I've come to receive, to receive my I'm patiently waiting, patiently waiting. Lord, for the, for the harvest. Yes, I got the Hebrew, got the Hebrew. 11 and 1. Lord, that kind of faith, faith to know that mine. And this is mine. Oh, mine. Oh, Lord, it's harvest time. Well, said I'm standing on this promise. I'm existing on your word. Uh, everything that I speak, Lord, I believe you give it to me. And it's the Father's a real good pleasure. That the kingdom, it is mine, and it's mine, oh mine, oh Lord, it's harvest, oh Lord, eh. oh Lord, I've come to receive, to receive my, I'm patiently waiting. Lord, for the harvest, yes, I got the Hebrew, 11 and 1, Lord, that kind of faith, faith to know that mine, and this is mine, oh, mine, oh, Lord, it's harvest time, well, I believe in him for great things, Lord, he promised me a long time ago. I know I'm going to get it because the Bible tells me so. Well, and it's the Father's a real good pleasure that the kingdom, it is mine and it's mine. Oh, my, oh, Lord, it's harvest, oh, Lord, eh. oh, Lord, I come. Oh, Lord, I come to receive, to receive my, I'm patiently waiting, waiting. Lord, for the harvest, yes, I got the Hebrew, Eleven and one, Lord, that kind of faith, faith to know that mine, and this is mine, oh, mine, oh, Lord, is. Let the church say amen. amen. Let the church say amen again. Amen. God is good, how often? And all the time. Find somebody close to you and say, neighbor, neighbor God, loves you. God loves you, and I do too. And, I do too. and if you love, me, you love me as much as I love you, there's nothing that can break, that can break. I love in two. Now look at the one you didn't want to look at the first time and say, I still got love for you too. <laughs> Praise the mighty name of Jesus. How y'all doing on this afternoon? I mean, you got to be doing pretty good. I mean, I'm looking at you and you looking at me and don't neither one of us deserve to be here. So, I mean, we, we must be doing pretty good on this afternoon. Saints going in on a what? On a Wednesday night. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. 
Amen. We thank all of those that have came out here um, on tonight. Amen. 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 It's nothing like, I know you came on Sunday morning, you got a good word, but it's nothing like that midweek refuel. Yeah. A- amen. You know, you're on the ride a car for so long, Brother Brown, and after a while, that, that, that gas light is going to come on, meaning that you need to stop somewhere coming up to refuel so that you can keep on going on. And I'm sure that the devil done beat up on some of y'all heads already on Monday. Matter of fact, he started Sunday afternoon as soon as you got out of church. And he came and got you on Monday and Tuesday. You needed this here on the day, because the devil coming tomorrow. I need something to fight the devil with. Amen, amen. We're just so glad for everyone that is here. I'm glad to be back in Duval. I'm glad to be back in the 904. Glad to be back. Amen. Glad to be back down here um, with you all once more and again. Um, thank God for allowing me to have safe passage here um, on today. Um, and I just want to know anybody came to hear a word from the Lord. Bro, this looked like he came to hear a word from the Lord on the night. Amen, amen. If you will, follow me to the book of 1 Samuel. The book of 1 Samuel, chapter number 30. And we're going to begin at verse number 1, and we're going to go down to verse number 8. 1 Samuel, chapter 30, beginning at verse number 1. The grass withers. And the flower thereof fadeth away, but the word of God shall stand forever. And also we want to welcome all of our live viewers on tonight via Facebook Live and whatever. We're just so glad that you have taken your time out to watch this on the night. And we pray that before you go to heaven, once again, that you will stop by the Sweetwater Church of Christ where the gospel is preached. You heard it from them, you didn't hear it from me, so come and check it out. Amen. First Samuel chapter 30, beginning at verse number one. You there? Amen. The Bible says, and it came to pass when David and his men were come to Ziklag on the third day that the Amalekites had invaded the south and Ziklag and smitten Ziklag and burned it with fire and had taken the women captives that were therein. They slew not any, either great or small, but carried them away and went on their way. So David and his men came to the city, and behold, it was burned with fire. And their wives and their sons and their daughters were taken captives. Then David and the people that were with him lifted up their voice and cried until they had no more power to cry. And David's two wives were taken captives, and David was greatly distressed, for the people spoke of stoning him, because the soul of all the people was grieved, every man for his sons and for his daughters. But David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. And David said to Abiathar the priest, Ahimelech's son, I pray thee, bring me hither the ephod. And Abiathar brought thither the ephod to David, and David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue after this truth? Shall I overtake them? And he answered him, Pursue, for you shall surely overtake them, and without fail recover all. I think we can work with that right there. And you shall, without fail, that means ain't no way that I can lose. You shall without fail recover all. Look at somebody next to you and tell them it's recovery time. And I, I, they ain't got nothing that they need God to give them back. Maybe they've never lost anything in their life. I don't know, but I need you to find somebody that looked like they came to church on a Wednesday night to give God some form of praise and glory for what God has done in their life and tell them, hey, it's recovery time. Here in this 30th chapter of the book of 1 Samuel, this particular text we see that we find a familiar character in Scripture, for the Bible tells us that it was, this passage was written none other than by a man by the name of David. That one that the Bible tells us that he had a heart for God and so much so that he was labeled a man after God's own heart. And that 
that David that was so bold that he was willing to stand and face the giant that had the nerve to downgrade the God of Israel. That, that same David that had seen God move in his life time and time again and given him victory. But at the same time, this is the same David that finds himself in a troubling situation. For the Bible says that this is a time, um, this passage was written during the time that David and his men were running for their life. This, this passage was written during a time when David and his men were fleeing for their existence. For the Bible tells us that David was running from a man by the name of Saul. Y'all remember Saul, don't you? And Saul was that king that the people asked for and God gave them. That, that king that the Lord had anointed for a season, but because of his disobedience, and because of his heart for himself and not for God, God had lifted his spirit off of him. And the Bible tells us that Saul is weary of hearing the women sing about how Saul has killed his thousands, but David has killed his tens of thousands, and he has launched an attack on him. And I just need to tell somebody here on this afternoon that might have thought and believed the hype that when you got saved and when you became a child of God, that everything was going to be easy and everything was going to be challenge free. But I came from Alabama to tell somebody on the night that the more gifted you are, the more the devil is going to fight against you. I wish I had somebody that knew what I was talking about. The more anointed you are, the more the adversary is going to try and stop you and kill the anointing that is on your life. And that is what David is right now. David is running for his life. And he and the men that, that follow him, the soldiers that have been with this man for years, they're running from their life. And the Bible says that things have gotten so bad for David that instead of running from Saul, he thought it better to seek refuge among his enemies. And so the Bible says that because of this, he goes to an unlikely ally and he asked the king of the Philistines if he would get, if he would allow him and his men to gain access into their land. And so the king, out of fear of making David a greater enemy, gives him and his men a parcel of land for him and his men to rest on by the name of Ziglag. Everybody say Ziglag. Ziglag. He, he's in Ziglag and, and Ziglag represents a place of transition. It, Ziglag represents a place where it's not where God promised you but it's better than the place that you were at. And I, I think everybody ought to learn how to give God praise for your Ziglag. You ought to, you ought to learn how to give God praise for your place of transition. I, I may not have everything that I want to have but I should thank God that I got more than I used to have. And I may not be where I want to be but I should thank God that I'm not where I used to be. Anybody here can say I'm not where I'm going, but thank God I'm not where I was. The Bible says that, that David and his men have moved into Ziglag. And they're trying to buy time. They're trying to strategize about what to do about Saul. For the Bible says that one day while David and his men were away, one day while they were out of town, one day while they were out on a mission, one day while they were out on an assignment, the Bible says that an enemy by the name of the Amalekites came in and destroyed their city. The enemy by the name of the Amalekites, the Bible says that they came into town and they burned everything down. What do you do when you are already in a place of uncertainty? You're already in a place of transition. And it seems now that the stability that you had is now gone. The little bit of hope that you had is now gone. It seems now that the little bit of comfort that you had is now gone because that's what David finds himself when the Bible says in verse number two that the Amalekites took the women captive and they slew not any great nor small but carried them away as they went on their way. In other words, the Bible says that these Amalekites came into David's home and they stole all of their possessions all of their women. But it's interesting that the Bible says that they didn't kill anything. Tell somebody they didn't kill anything. <laughs> 
They didn't kill anything because what you have to understand, brothers and sisters, is that some of us are in a place where we feel like the adversary maybe has killed our dreams or killed our hopes or killed our joy. But I came to tell you that the devil can't kill anything that God wants to be alive. And, and the only reason that we can be defeated and the only reason that the devil can overtake us is if we give in. Because we got God on us. Great is he that is in us than he that is in the world. I can stand against a million with God on my side. I'm not worried about who's on my side as long as God is for me. I got everything that I need to overcome. I got everything that I need to conquer and make it through as long as God is on my side. Some of us may be feeling like we can't see prosperity because we're just looking at struggle everywhere we look around. We're in a place where we can't see healing because every time we go to the doctor, he's telling us about a different sickness that we got. Some of us are in a place where we can't see our problems because all we see are problems all around us. But I came to tell you that as long as you got God once again, you got everything that you need. And he just said, good morning, because some of us are under the impression that the enemy has killed what God gave us, but if God has given you a promise, and if you are believing God to do something in your life, you can take that check to the bank and you can cash it because God is always going to come through. If you're praying for your child to come back to the church, I don't care if tonight they're on the other side of Jacksonville in a crack house somewhere. You keep on praying and you keep on trusting God. Don't give in. Let God handle them. Sooner or later, a door is going to open. Your child is going to come up. Just put your faith in God. The Bible says that David and his men, they moved into Ziglag. They're trying to buy time about what it is that they can do about Saul. They're, they're in a place where the enemy had stolen everything, but he did not kill anything. But he has taken everything away alive from where they were. But notice in verse number two, notice what it says. And you have to understand that the Bible, first of all, is a descriptive book. It, it says what it says for a reason. The Bible doesn't just say what it says for the sake of literature, but it says what it says for a reason. And, 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 and it says, the Bible says that the enemy came in and he took the women captive. Now I read over that and I said, well, they just took the women. That, that couldn't have been too much about that. They just took the women away. But, but as I, I, I look deeper into that, I, I, I really found out um, that what we see here was the intention of the adversary. Because you must understand that women are significant in this text. Women are important in this text because you got to realize that while David and his men are the main characters, understand that without women, their next generation could not have been birthed. Without women, without women, what was to come after them could not have been birthed. And I came to tell somebody in Jacksonville on this afternoon that what you got to realize is that some of us think that what we're going through is all about us. Some of us think that the attack that the adversary has sent against us is just about us and where we are right now. But I came to tell somebody that what the enemy wants to do in our lives is bigger than where we are right now. What the adversary is trying to do in our lives is bigger than just us. But if he knows if he can stop us now, now, then he'll stop what's coming from ever being. I believe that's why some of us know that we've been going through something that's got to be bigger than where we are right now. Because we ain't even that wonderful, praise God. <laughs> Uh, we, we ain't even got it going on like that. We, we don't even live on the side of town that we want to live on yet. We, we ain't even driving what we want to drive just yet. But the devil is not after what you got right now. He's after your potential of what you can become if you keep on holding on and trusting in God. They're not in the place that They've stolen the women from David. They've stolen their wives. They've, they've stolen their daughters so that the next generation could not have been born. And what you got to understand is that the Bible says in verse number four that when they get home and find this situation, it says that David and the people with him lifted up their voices and cried until they had no more power to cry. Can you imagine on this afternoon the level of agony 
the level of grief, the level of distress that these men must have been under. Because you've under, got to understand, these weren't no soft men. No, no, no. These, these, these weren't punks, if you will. But, but these, were, these were mighty men. These were soldiers. These were men that had been in battle. These were men that had taken lives at the end of their sword. And the Bible says that here, that even though they are tough, even though they are strong, the Bible says that they have cried until they have had no more power to cry. And I wonder if there's anybody in here that knows what it's like to be in a place, even with your gifted preaching self, you're preaching with tears in your eyes. Even with your gifted singing self, you got to go through a season where nobody knows where you are. Nobody knows what you're going through. You come to church and you lift your hands during the song, but nobody knows that you're really crying on the inside. You come to church and you stand up when everybody else stands up because you don't want to stand out. But on the inside, you're broken and you're weary and you're hurting and you're wondering if God God has forgotten about you. But what the Lord has tried to show us is even with your gifted self, the devil know how to hurt you. The devil knows exactly how to get to you. But you got to be weary. You got to be aware of the fact that he's not going to get you confused with me. He knows what we both desire. And he's going to throw that at us every chance that he gets. Because the Bible says, the Bible says that, that these men, that they are crying until they have no more power to cry. But notice that when the Bible says in verse number 6, the Bible says that David was greatly distressed. Hear this now. For the people spoke of stoning him. Every man for his son and for his daughter. But look at what the Bible says. It says, but David... And good God Almighty, but David encouraged himself in the Lord. You got to realize now that what's interesting about this is that these are the same men that have been with David for a long time. These are the same men that have fought with David for years. These are the same men that have been willing to die for David. These are the same men that have been willing to lay down their life for David. But at the same time, these are the same men that are not willing to kill David and realize this reason is because they have allowed their misery to cancel out their memory. They have allowed their misery to cancel out their memory. Oh, preacher, what do you mean? They've allowed what they're going through now to cause them to forget what they've already been through. And I came to tell somebody tonight in this situation, and I don't care what you're going through, don't you ever allow what you're going through today to make you forget what God did for you yesterday. Don't you ever allow the, what you, the, today's sickness make you forget yesterday when God healed your body. Don't you ever a lot today's bills that you cannot pay make you forget yesterday when God made a way out of nowhere. Somebody can say when I was down to nothing God showed up and made something out of nothing. Oh the devil could have discouraged you when you had a chance but now he done messed around and let you got to look close to Jesus. Now you got evidence that God will make a way. Well how do you know, you know he'll make a way? Because the last time I was in trouble God showed up and God made a way for me. Can I have testimony service for a minute? Can I have testimony service for a minute? Praise the Lord, everybody. First giving honor to God who's the head of my life. To the bishops, the minister, and the deacons, saints, and friends. I just want to testify that the Lord will make a way somehow. Let me see the hands of those that had a pain in your body that the doctors could not fix. But God showed up and let you know that he was still a healer. Wave your hands at me. Let me see the hands of those that had a testimony that when I was down to nothing and the enemy thought that he was going to come in like a flood, that the Lord lifted up a standard against him. God is able. Because you can't allow what you are going through now to make you forget that God is able to turn the situation around. Just encourage yourself. Thank you, Jesus. The Bible says, the Bible says, the Bible says that David and now these men are trying to stone him. And the Bible says that David is greatly distressed in himself. 
And I believe I got some folk here that know what it's like to be distressed in yourself and not have an answer for what you need to do. But I came to tell you that sometimes you got to be like David because the Bible says that David encouraged himself. Tell your neighbor, sometimes you got to encourage yourself. Uh-huh, the preacher ain't always going to be there to pat you on the back. The elder ain't going to be at your house to pat you on the back. Your mama, your dad ain't always going to be there to pat you on the back. You're going to have to learn how to encourage yourself in the Lord. Sometimes you can't get the preacher on the phone, even though it's always in my hand. Sometimes you can't, sometimes you can't get the elder on call on the phone. Sometimes you can't get the prayer warrior on the phone. But so I came to tell you that sometimes you got to get in the mirror and preach your own revival. Look in the mirror and look at yourself and say, I know you're going through, but the Bible says that no weapon formed against me shall be able to prosper. Sometimes you got to get in the mirror and preach your own revival. Wipe the tears out of your own eye and say, weeping may endure for a night, but joy. Coming in the morning. Ooh, y'all gonna get me in trouble tonight. Hallelujah. Ooh, my God. Sometimes we gotta get in there and encourage ourselves. Because y'all know what it's like if you let this stuff get in your head and, and have time to settle down and take up residence in your mind. You done really got yourself up in some trouble. Because let me tell you, I don't care what kind of problem you had, you have, somehow it always end up in your head. It always end up in your mind. And now not only do you have a physical thing going on, and, and you got a mental thing going on. And let me tell you, it's easy to deal with the physical, but it's hard to deal with that mind, but let me tell you. Let me tell you, it's hard to deal with that mind. Therefore, that's why we got to think of, we got to keep our mind on heavenly things. We got to keep our mind on those things that are spiritual, those things that build up our faith. Because you already know, when somebody call you and tell you something, put something in your ear, get it on your mind, that's all you think about for the whole day. That's all you think. And don't let it be some good juice. Don't, don't, no. Don't let it be some, some lifting tea that they got to give you. Don't, don't let it be none of that. Your, your mind is just gone for the whole day. And that's all that you're thinking about. But see, your mind ought to be so full of God and what God, and man, I, I'm so excited about what God is getting ready to do. I don't know what he's going to do, but I'm so excited about what God is getting ready to do. I ain't got time to listen to what you're talking about. I ain't got no time to feed into your foolishness. I'm looking for a blessing. Sometimes you got to learn to tell yourself that weeping can only last for a moment. But I got a feeling that if I can just hold on just a little while longer, everything is going to be all right. Hold on just a, just a little while longer because everything is going to be all right. The Bible says that David encourages himself. But I like verse number seven. It says, and David gets up and calls for the high priest, a man by the name of Abiathar. And he said to the high priest, he said, bring me hither the ephod. And verse number eight says that David put on the ephod and inquires of the Lord and said, Lord, what shall I do? But hold on a second, because you got to first of all understand that it was customary for the king to call for the high priest. And the high priest would put on the ephod and intercede on behalf of the king. But I like what David said. David, he called for the high priest and he said, listen here, man, no disrespect. I know you got a job. But I'm too desperate for God to let you go to God on behalf of me. This thing, this thing that I got between me and God, it's a personal matter. And I can't get, let nobody else get involved in what me and God got going on. And I came to tell somebody tonight, you can't praise God for me. I got to praise God for myself. You can't shout for me. I got to shout for myself. You can't go for me. I got to go to God for myself. David puts on the ephod, and he goes to God and says, what do I do? These men want to stone me. What do I do? They've lost their families. What do I do? 
The enemy is winning. He said, should I just sit here? Or should I go after them? But I like what God said because God told him, pursue. Go after them. He said, for you shall without fail recover all. And some of you here tonight, You've been wondering, you've been questioning God about things going on in your life, and you've been asking God, Lord, what do I do? Lord, what's the next step? Lord, what do you want me to do? And your answer is, get up from there. Wipe the tears out your eyes. Get up from there and stop crying. Get up from there and get yourself together because it's time now to go back and get your stuff. I don't know about y'all. I'm ready to go back and get my stuff. I don't, oh, I, and then, as I always say, I don't want just some of it. I want everything. I want all mine. Give me me. I see the Lord. I'm closing. I need seven brothers. One brother. Two brothers. Three brothers. Four brothers. Five brothers. Six brothers. Seven brothers. Come on, come on, come on. Line up right here in the front. Line up right here in the front. Because the Bible says that after David, after David had talked to God and God told this man, he said, you're going to get it back. So David goes back and he tells this man, y'all stop tripping. Stop worrying. Stop complaining. We're going to get our stuff back. And the Bible says that David had 600 men. Y'all see the 600 men? It says that he had the 600 men. And let's go. It says that they began to march. Come on, y'all. It said they began to march towards the place that they were going. This is the way, y'all. This is the way that we're going. It said that they began to march. It said they began to march. But it says that as they were walking, they came to a place and they stopped. Because there were 200 men that had got tired and said that they could not go any further. There were 200 men that got tired and said that they could not go any further. And this is a testament to us that everybody that started with you ain't going to always finish with you. Everybody that began this race with you is not going to be at the finish line with you. And let me tell you, when some folk get ready to give up, you got to learn how to lead some folk where they are. If you want to be sick, you stay there and be sick. You want to be broke, you stay there and be broke. But I cried too much, I prayed too much, called on God too much not to get a miracle. Amen. The Bible says, and the Bible says that they got rid of those. They said, now nah, we got 400 men left. Y'all see the 400? Uh -huh. We got 400 men left. And it says they're marching. They're marching on. They're going towards. And it says that while they were on their way, they came up on a man laying in a road. A man. The Bible says that he was an Amalekite. It said that David went up to the man and said, hey, I want to know. Do you know where our stuff is? The man said, yeah. It's right over there. He says, right over the hill. And you got to understand something. That when you get serious about your pursuit, God will always put somebody in your path to give you an answer to it. Oh, that's somebody shout right there. Somebody can say, Lord, send me somebody that's going to give me an answer. Send me somebody that's going to be a blessing because I don't know where it's coming from. But Lord, I need a miracle. Bible says that they're marching and they oh, thank y'all, thank y'all. The Bible says, thank y'all, thank you. That they're going, that they're going, they're marching on. It says they're going. And it says that David gets closer to that hill. That David looks over the hill and he sees their Malachites down there with all of that stuff. And you gotta understand, they weren't just down there chilling with this man's stuff. But he said he looked over there and said that they were partying and dancing and celebrating with the stuff that they had stole from them. And let me tell you, your adversary been celebrating. Your adversary been dancing and having a good time. Oh, I done got her joy. She ain't going to have no more joy. I done stole their peace. They ain't going to have no more peace. But somebody ought to be like me on the night and tell the devil that the party has been canceled. You ain't got no reason to celebrate or rejoice because God has already given me the victory. And the Bible says that David and his men said they went down there in the camp and said they slew the enemy all day long. Told them jokers every way but loose. Said, said they beat them all day long. But that ain't even the shouting point, my sister. You ready for the shout? 
The Bible says that when it was all over, and David recovered all. Can you see some of us being in David's shoes? I can give me two more wives. Have some more children. Y'all can do the same thing. Stop all your crying and your moaning and everything. We can all get that stuff back. But no, I don't want something new. I want what belonged to me. It's my, what, what, what the folks say on that commercial, it's my money and I want it now. It's mine. I admire David. I admire David so much. Especially the part. When he went to the priest, he said, give me the ephod. That, that, that wasn't something that a king did. No. That, that was for the priest. He, he was the person designated to stand and intercede on behalf of the king and talk to God. He was the middle man, but David said, no, I don't need no middle man. And, and, and let me tell you, when you get really serious and you need God to show up, and I'm not talking about tomorrow. I'm talking about God show up right now. You ain't got time for them long drawn out King James prayers. You ain't got time to be trying to call nobody up to help you and to pray for you. But you say, Father, here am I. I'm your child. I'm standing in the need of a blessing. I'm standing in the need of a miracle. God show up and show out in my life. Lord, what do I need to do? Should I just sit here? They already came in and burned up everything that we had, took all of our stuff. What am I supposed to do? Just sit here? You already crying. That's some of y'all messes right there. Stop crying and get up and move on with your life. While you sitting there and doing all that crying, the folk you crying over, they out there living their life, happy, doing it big, with somebody else enjoying their life, and you sitting there at the house moaning, groaning, complaining, acting like you ain't got no life left, no vibrancy about yourself. Do you not know that you are fearfully and wonderfully made in the outside of God if they didn't see the beauty that God put on the inside of you? That's your loss. That was free. That went in the lesson. That was free. <laughs> Lord, what do I do? On oh, my job. Lord, have mercy. Oh, I just got a promotion. Now folk mad. Mm -hmm. I'm doing this, Lord. I ain't bothering nobody, but it seemed like everybody trying to set up a snare or a trap Lord, to get me in some kind of trouble, get me messed up. Yeah. God, 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 God say, okay. And we got to understand this. That, that whatever you're going through, whatever is surrounding you, is not what you're supposed to have your eyes fixed on anyway. Because let me tell you, a child of God can be walking through the fires of hell. Hell fire is all around you. And as long as you keep your eyes fixed on Jesus Christ and the promise that God made you, and that is that I will never leave you, nor will I forsake you. So no matter ever I'm going through, as long as I keep my eyes on the prize, man, I'm a force to be reckoned with. You better ask somebody. I'm God's child. I'm armed, locked and loaded with the word of God, man. You better, who? Lord. Shall I pursue after this truth? Shall I overtake them? God, God looked down and said, David, David, listen to me. Listen, listen, David, listen. Have I not given you victory before? Have I not defeated your enemies before? Have I, have I not blessed you? And been by your side, even though you'd messed up, you messed up, ain't up been by your side. Oh, stop thinking because you ain't no. You, you, I mean, I, I, everybody got something, you know. That, yeah, everybody got a, 
Hey, hello, somebody. Everybody got a demon that they fight with. Every, everybody got something in their life. I don't care how white your dress is and how black your suit is. Everybody got something in their life that keeps them from being all of whom God wants them to be. Paul went to the Lord three times and said, Lord, remove this thorn from my flesh. And God said, no. My grace is sufficient for you. For my strength is made perfect in your weakness. So I'm only strong when I'm weak. David, David, David said, Lord, Lord, these folk trying to kill me. I ain't kill they folk. Them folk took them. Y'all know we always got to find somebody to blame, you know. He in charge, so we might as well kill him. And be aware, if you want to be a leader. You want to stand out front? You want to be somebody that people look up to? The very folk that will lay their life down for you today will be ready to take your life tomorrow. I ain't telling you about what I heard. I'm telling you about what I know. The very folk that today, Hosanna, Hosanna. Tonight, crucified. They don't wait till tomorrow. They t today. Tomorrow in promise, we need to get him today. <laughs> Lord, Lord, what do I do? Should I go back to school? I done got too old now. Lord, I've been thinking about starting this business forever. Should I do it? Yeah, but Lord, is the, is the marriage worth working out? What? Uh, is the relationship worth mending? Is the stronghold worth me holding on to? Pursue. Go after, and you shall, without fail, recover all. Yes. Ooh, I just forgot something. Thank you, Holy Ghost. You got to remember. David and his men down in Ziglag were not the only town that the Amalekites had raided. So you got to understand. That when the Bible says that David recovered all, he didn't just get back they stuff. <laughs> he got back the stuff that he had stole from everybody else as well. How many of y'all know God will always supersede your expectations? Lord, I'm just looking for a little meal, a little, a little oil to make me a cake. You come in, God got you a, a filet mignon laid out on the table with, with all the fixes, you know, your flow's filet laid out on the table. God got, God, got, God got everything laid out for you. But you got to be willing to pursue. The, the Bible says that the kingdom suffereth violence and the violent take it by force. I ain't asking the devil for nothing. Give me what's mine. When we, 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 we as a people, I, I don't know if y'all recognize it or not, but we got power in Jesus. Yeah. There's power. Just in that name, there's power. Demons tremble at the name of Jesus. That, that there's power in the name of Jesus. And when we as God's children learn to apply the name of Jesus and the blood of Jesus to the situation that we encounter in this life, let me tell you, you will find yourself living worry and stress free because you realize, Lord, I can't handle it, but I know your blood can cover it and take care of it. Lord, here it is. You saying amen, but take that grief and give it to God. Take the anger and give it to God. 
You, 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 you used to look different. Now you got wrinkles in your face. Anger will do that to you. Stress will do that to you. You know, everybody you see, you're on defense mode. You're already scrunching up, you know, looking crazy. I don't want you to talk to me. I'm <laughs> because you've been hurt so much in the past by folk. Relationships, family, church people. It seems like everybody, everybody that come your way, they out to get something. They got an ulterior motive about why they want to be your friend. What, what, can I, what can I get around you? What can I get from you? You know, whatever. But you cannot allow what has happened to determine how I'm going to live my life now in the present. Uh, that, 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 that's one reason God put eyes in the front of your head and not the back, because he wants you to keep your eyes centered forward and not backward. What is behind me, thank God for it. Thank God for what I have endured. Thank God for what I have been through. But my blessing is not behind me. My blessing is right here. What do I do, God? Should I just sit here? Or should I go after him? God said pursue. And you shall. That's my favorite part right here. Without fail. <laughs> Without fail. You're going to get it. You shall recover all. If God has made us a promise, we can believe that, brother. As I said, that's a check that you can take to the bank. You ain't got to worry about it. It ain't going to bounce nowhere. It's going to go through because God is good on his promises. If God has made you a promise again, you can hold on to it. How many of y'all holding on to a promise from God on the night? And even though it may not have came through as of yet, Lord, I'm believing you and I'm trusting you. I don't know where the blessing is coming from, but I get up on Monday morning going to my job looking for a blessing. I, I get up on Sunday morning coming into the house of God looking for, I'm in the grocery store looking for a blessing. Lord, is $100 going to be laying on the floor around here somewhere? Lord, I, I don't know where, let me go down this aisle. Lord, I, I don't know where it's coming from, but I know a blessing is on the way. Whatever it is in your life, because we already know that our adversary, he's on his job 24-7. Whatever it is in your life, be it peace, your joy, your serenity, whatever it is in your life, that you have caused circumstances to take it from. I never understood because I don't know about y'all, but this joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me. So ain't nobody in the world that can take it away. This peace that I have, the world didn't give it. Therefore, the world cannot take it away. Don't you ever allow people to damper your spirit. Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me, tell, let me tell you, you might have a heart for God, and you want to be on fire and do work for God. And it seems like everybody around you, they just ain't got no time for Jesus. Yeah. That, that, that's not discouragement for you. That should be a little more juice for you to go on and do what you need to do. Because guess what? I ain't trying to be a, if everybody else go to hell, you trying to go to hell with everybody else? I, I, I'm trying to live right. I'm trying to go with God. I'm trying to work out my soul salvation with fear and trembling. Because I, I know that sooner or later God going to call for me and I got to be ready. Got to be ready. Got to be ready when it calls. You can recover from a fall. You can recover from a divorce. You can recover. Child out of wedlock, guess what? You can recover. Lies, you believe in them now, you done told so many. You, you can recover. <laughs> Ooh, I talked about somebody, right? I don't know who it was. Will you call? I don't know who y'all. You can recover. You can get it back. And if it's one thing that you don't want to lose, 
is your relationship and your stance with the Lord. So my brother, my sister, you lost that. You really stand in the need of some recovery. And you need to get it back. And with God on your side, you can make it. You can achieve and you can receive. With God on your side. Stop trying to do it by yourself. And learn how to come to Jesus. And say Lord here am I. Your child. Is once again standing. In the need of a blessing. I'm standing in the need of a blessing. Not, not, Not just on the night. But every day of my life. Lord I need you to walk with me. So I won't walk in places that I ought not walk. Lord, I need you to keep my mind so I won't, it won't think on things that I ought not think. Lord, I need you to bridle my tongue so I won't say things that I, that I ought not say. Y'all, y'all know what I'm talking about. That, 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 that pink tornado that you're closing up right now. I know. I know. We all need God. On us, on a day-to-day basis. So what the song say? If thou withdraw yourself from it. Where shall I go? Ain't nowhere for you to go. Come on to Jesus. My brother, my sister, if you're here tonight, you're not a Christian. You find yourself outside of the ark of safety. This, this night, better than any other night, is an opportunity for you to give your life to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let me tell you, God didn't just start thinking about you. God had you on his mind before the foundation of the world before he ever reached down in the ground picked up a little dirt and all that stuff made Adam guess what he was thinking about you guess what he knew your mama your aunties and all he knew all your folk before you were ever formed in your mama's room God knew everything about you he considered you what is man that thou art mindful mm-hmm. of him. Who are we? We ain't nothing. We, 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 we just big piles of dirt walking around. Yeah. Yeah. What, 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 what's so special about us that God should remember us? So much on his mind that he prepared a way for us to be able to enter into a covenant relationship with him. And if we remain faithful in that relationship, my brother, guess what? One day we're going to get paid. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I ain't talking about that payday that you've been looking for every two weeks. Yes, First of the month for some people. <laughs> I'm talking about a payday out this world. And here it is in, in words. Well done. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Good and faithful servant. Yes, sir. Come on up a little higher. Yes. Enter into the joys of life. Yes. That's all I'm trying to hear. Yes, well done. Well done. If God say anything else, I'm like, Lord, what you finna say? Hold on now. I, I, <laughs> hold on. <Yeah. laughs> it is, well done. Good and faithful servant. Yeah. Amen. Amen. We all striving to make heaven our home. Amen. Let's live faithful unto God and serve him with our entire being. Not, 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 not halfway Christian, but all the way yeah. with God. Not halfway sold out but all the way sold out for God. Yeah. My brother, my sister, if yeah. you're here on the night, you're not a Christian. You come out here in the gospel, believing it with all of your heart, repenting of your sins and confessing Christ as your Lord and your Savior, being baptized with him in the water of grave of baptism, have your sins washed away, eradicated, done away with, never to come up before you in this life and neither the life that is to come. And the Lord himself will add you to his body. He will add you to his family. And let me tell you, I'm glad to be a Peterson. I mean, I love everything that's attached to being Trevante Peterson. But, but ain't, ain't nothing better than being able to be called a Christian. Being able to be say, hey, that, that's my daddy up there. He, that's, that's my daddy. You know, he, and, you know I don't, hey, your, your daddy might have a BMW. My dad owned a cattle on a thousand hills. Silver. Silver in the gold. Belong to my God. Hey. Yeah. Yeah. If you're here on the night, you're already a Christian, and you find yourself in sin, you ain't no worse than nobody else that's up in here. You, you just got common sense to ask God to forgive you. So if, you, if you're in sin on the night, 
Come on, ask God to forgive you. Get back in fellowship with God. Man, ain't, ain't, ain't nobody business what you got going on. That's between you and God. So many, so many people are going to miss heaven and end up in hell because they're too shamed by what folk going to say. I'm not repenting to you anyway. I need to ask God for forgiveness. He, he's the only one that can wipe away my sin. So my brother, my sister, if you're here on the night and you're subject to the invitation, don't put off today for what you plan on doing tomorrow. And, and guess what? We ain't like everybody else. We don't just baptize on Sunday. We baptize on Wednesday nights too. Guess what? You come back. You, I'll be gone tomorrow, but you come back on Thursday. They'll put you in the water with God. Whosoever will, let him come today that you hear his voice. If you're subject to the invitation, I beg and I plead with you as we stand. Come to Jesus now.